Patrick, thank you very much. I'm going to call to order uh, the regular meeting of the Hastings and Hudson Board of Education for July 16th, 2024. Um, we're going to open up for public comment. There is no public, so we're going to move on to our business items. Maria, I know you just got here, so you know, if you need some time to look things over, just you know, let me know. Um, I'm going to open up for any questions or comments regarding business items 1 through 12. And let it, maybe <clears throat> Maureen and I can preface a little bit, particularly item 10, which is uh, posted here in three parts. Um, this is a this this is actually there are a whole lot of reasons to me as it turns out this was the pivotal reason to meet. This is a recommendation as it relates to a firm as a, a cover medal under item 10, first of the three. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a to carry us through what's called a building condition survey, which is required as explained in the memo. Very importantly, in addition, it's to carry us through the pre-bond services. And that's really, in my mind, soup to nuts on where we would be going with the whole referendum process mm -hmm. as LAN describes it in their supporting materials. Uh, if any of the board members have been concerned about how are we managing this in very complex process of the pre-bond work, the bond work where we're headed, if all goes well, this would be the firm that would be our, our consultant right through it. And that was so while they were under review for arguably a narrow piece, building condition survey, which is quite comprehensive anyway, uh, but as Maureen can explain in a second, that would be the work they would do. But then the pre-bond services, which in their materials explained, uh, would be very, very thorough. The addition potentially of uh, a public uh, a PR firm or all the rest, how we handle that. But but they're, they've worked with many, many districts in the region quite successfully on analyzing what's needed for a capital bond, then all those technical pieces of that, then also working through with the board how to commit to whatever the work is, then the level, then bringing that all the way through the communications process and, and all the rest. But they would really be fundamental to particularly Maureen, Joe, me, the facility committee as to where are we headed now with the bond. Um, so I, I don't know if you want to add to that, Maureen, and there are three, there's, again, we had to, the one reason you had the materials today is it was a very competitive process. We had excellent firms submitting. Mm -hmm. I think we were actually pleasantly surprised by the, the range and quality of submissions. Alex was part of the, uh, the final review meeting with four, mm -hmm. so he can speak to that. Uh, we, we're not going to go to the names of the others. Uh, we'll leave that off the record. Uh, but we will hear, you know, can focus in on land. It was a very competitive process. Uh, and one reason we you, you got materials today is we wanted to do due diligence with those firms not selected. So they would, because it's a public meeting, so that they weren't learning through a public meeting that they weren't selected. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is a very strong recommendation, which we can explain in more detail. But th this is the main part of this 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 agenda item. No sure, sure yes. So, or? no, um, as, as Bill said, it was a very, we were very pleasantly surprised with the number of firms that um, submitted proposals. And it was a quite, um, you know, even difficult to narrow down to the four that we brought in to interview. And uh, some of which we've worked with before in different capacities. And it was a really competitive um, race. I will say with Land. And in terms of, um, they did stand out even outside of the dollars around their proposal. Their dollars actually for the BCS are in fact lower than anybody else's were. Um, but uh, not, that was not the deciding factor with professional services, unlike um, construction type projects. With professional services, districts are not required to select the least expensive, but rather look at it, you know, based upon um, other criteria. But we were very, um, very pleasantly surprised with them. I, Bill, as well as myself, are very familiar with some of their work um, and similar to some of the other folks that we brought in. Um, Lan, as an example, currently, um, even within Westchester, has been, and I think it's in their documentation, has been working in Maronick for 30 years. And when I say that, each few years or so, they're going out with a, a, a very large RFP process which would allow them to switch out as we could at any point in time. So um, similar to this appointment, if there was something along the line that we were 
unhappy with and we couldn't resolve, we would always have the ability to go back out. We're not locked into working with them um, forever, like say with the pre-bond, just to kind of also throw that in there. It's a very, it is a, um, a relationship that we believe will see us through as Bill said, and that that's, we were looking at it from two lenses to ensure that um, whoever was going to do our building condition survey, we wanted them to be on board to do the pre-bond with us as well. Um, but back to land, they've done a extensive work, 30 years in Mamaronic. Um, I'm very familiar with the buildings. One of my closest colleagues works there and I've been in those facilities a number of times over the years and um, th they've done a lot of um, all different types of scope of work, you know, from fields, in interior, exterior, additions, um, outdoor learning spaces, I mean, you name it, they've done it. A lot of sustainable builds. They, they have expertise in, in, that, in that area as well. We always want to make sure that, that um, any firm we're working with also has, has uh, people within the firm that have an expertise in sustainability and are um, lead um, certified, or I guess that's how you would say that. And uh, we were very happy. And then also Bronxville, they ended up coming in during uh, a transition that Bronxville was having with a firm they worked with for a long time and were able to pick up the other firm's work and able to execute um, at the end and living with other people's design budgets and then also having to include other work. And uh, that kind of stood out to us. And also the field work, which is a, a big piece of this, one of the things with LAN, um, which we weren't, it wasn't as though we wouldn't have uh, looked at a firm without an in in uh, in-house uh, team that does fields, but that is what also put them over the top compared to other firms that they did have all those services in-house. Some of the others, which are excellent, and we were very fortunate to have a lot of people bid on us, some of them needed to, they would do a subcontract for that. And just with the timing, we were a little bit concerned that we, you know, that they would not be able to also hit the marks with the, the uh, time frame we laid out for them, so. I would just say from my perspective, having looked at the presentation, what I found particularly instructive was the bond referendum work that they were able to refer to, mm -hmm. particularly in Bronxville, because it is, you know, we have many parallels yeah. as one of our peer mm -hmm. districts, mm -hmm. and that it was 2018 yeah. and 2019, so fairly recent, yeah. and mm -hmm. a project that, you know, so, kind of seems uh, in Sylvia, our let me pick up on that, because normally you would have had the material several days ahead, just so new board members know, when you meet on a mm -hmm. Monday, there's a Friday rule that you're gonna get everything by the Friday before, except in emergencies, and this qualifies as an emergency. Because we just did not want to be sitting here without having told the other firms that they weren't picked. It would have been really bad form. So if you could go to the, I just want to flag a little more in case you didn't get a chance to look at it, but if you go to the second number 10, the first number 10, at link is, uh, and then Melissa D had to be out for some uh, emergency things. She's fine, but normally she'd be here in our backbone. So we were really hustling today. But if you go to the PowerPoint presentation, if you saw that, let me just highlight a few things that jumped out. Uh, if you go to the, the very first slide, literally pictorially, you see in the bottom left corner, that's, that's uh, Bronxville. And what matters to us in that their role with Bronxville is if you look later at all of their districts, they're districts that have a fair amount of space to work with. We don't have space to work with. Bronxville does not have space to work with. So their in-depth work at Bronxville mattered a lot. You go to the second slide, there are two people on that slide. Uh, Matthew is, is a longstanding principal in charge. As it says, we would not see a lot of Matthew, but Danielle would be on the point with a very multidisciplinary team. You go to the next slide, full service. Look down there, they have uh, almost everything is in-house. So they can work with their own people, proven, and now for a long, long since 65, uh, 1965. The only th place they go outside is for, um, uh, not civil engineers, there's one type of engineer they have to go outside or shop for. Uh, I had it written down. Uh, yeah, but, um, but they also, depending on where we get, if there's some creative field, design. Field design, I believe. Yeah, That's creative design, design yeah. work mm -hmm. that they, they, they could subcontract. We'd approve that and all the rest, but there could be, they're willing to work with other architects and designers if there's some other creative ideas we've already come upon. Um, you go down to their client list, very important to see the mix of districts they've worked with. Um, and we're, you'll see later a very strong reference recommendation from Bronxville. These are the things that jumped out at us. We were impressed, uh, if you go to slide five, their little cut on us, they used the portrait of a Hastings learner. They looked at that, they'd done their homework, right. uh, which uh, to me says a lot. 
Um, I'm not going to, I'm just going to hit what mattered to us in this. Then you get into slide six, what goes on in the BCS. They have a lot of expertise in that whole process. This is a strict requirement from the state. If you don't have experience with it, um, and one of the really good firms did not, uh, that, that, that we, we could be in a tricky spot. Uh, they also have, as Sylvia's flagged, a lot of experience with bonds and referendum and what's required. So if you go to like slide seven, that's the detail on the BCS and what's required. Again, very substantive. Uh, you come down to slide eight, the required forms. They themselves said these are not enough. This is what the state requires. You could meet the state requirement, it's not going to be adequate. They would bring the reporting and the submissions to us as a, to you as a board, us administrators, and the community to greater detail. Um, the, uh, and then you take an example then on slide nine of what their actual submission would look like. Uh, we did flag for all of the finalists that there has already been a very comprehensive set of work done, which you all saw this spring. We wanted to make sure that's looked at, paid attention to, drawn on, so we're not just repeating things and recreating the wheel. Um, and then let me jump all the way down to the bond referendum work. That's starting on slide 14. Uh, again, that's future work, but the pre-work, you can see the districts they have worked with here. Um, and then in materials not here, uh, but we can get to you is where the bond level is established and then what the cost of the outcome was. They are within, I think it was about a one to two percent yeah, gap, max. which is remarkable to have their work be that close. Uh, and that di difference is change orders and where the number went up close to 10 percent, that was all change or orders driven by the client, not by mistakes or all the rest. Right, it was, it was um, uh, what is considered owner-driven change orders. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just want to, I'll stop there. I just wanted to highlight for you, given we unfortunately got this stuff to you, but for the you know, last minute again, it was we did everything we could, but we just had to be respectful I just of other clients. We have one other yeah, um, thing, and you, you mentioned it. One of the things that was important to us with um, reviewing the different firms was that if, um, as Bill had mentioned, we're uh, very much into a conceptual um, design now for what an addition in this courtyard could look like. Um, they were also, there was a willingness if in fact we were to um, include that or do an addition to this building in the bond referendum and we decided to have a different design, a design architect, which is um, not all firms love that, but they were a willingness to, for us as the client to have as many partners involved if we felt was that was in the best interest of what we were, you know, hoping to achieve because it works out from a standpoint that our um, architects, once a bond is approved, get a percentage of construction if that that dollar amount is sort of flat it's just the di distribution of those dollars that may look different if we had a design architect you know working in with a firm so i say that to say it gives us also flexibility um, because as we've learned before some architects we may really like their work in certain things but as we get if we were to um include that or if that were to be something we want to include in a bond we may want to have the current architects that have been working with us for a long time and have already developed the scheme and brought it to a certain level. We may want to continue with that because a they would be head of of others, and we may also uh, prefer what they're offering to us. So I think um, having that flexibility in the contract was also a consideration. And to um, the other one of the things being we have a time frame in which we've been speaking about, about having a potential bond referendum in um, the early spring, they were also, um, the firms that we interviewed, we wanted to make sure when they went back with their teams that they could guarantee to us they could deliver and provide for us a potential schedule on when they could hit the ground here within the district with all their teams and all the different disciplines. And that was something that they were, they did go back and they had a full, full conversation. Actually, they. They wanted to really discuss it prior to letting us know, which sometimes people just say yes, even without going back and checking with their partners. And they, they did provide us a guarantee and a, a potential schedule if they were selected. And they were also going to um, do both both of uh, these processes. They would be running in parallel. So some architects spoke about doing the BCS and then starting a pre-bond, you know, depending upon how their approach to the work was. and. With this team, they were able to do, you know, their thinking, and others as well were, were doing that together. 
not waiting on the outcome of the BCS. Yeah, if I can also do because I was in the meetings just from my personal perspective, um, you know, some of the other highlights that really stood out for me were that they were K-12 only, that's their whole thing. So they've, that, that they've been through that sort of soup to nuts process of the pre-bond and the bond and the architectural engineering numerous times as, as the documents show, that was very compelling. Also, one of the things that came up, you know, about the BCS, well, we had a lot of good firms, but, um, you know, it, it, as we kind of have joked about, it can be the case where the BCS is conducted by very junior staff, and that was one of the questions we had to this mm -hmm. company, and I was impressed that for the BCS, they have two licensed architects and two licensed engineers on site, as that, that, that's who conducts it. Um, and, you know, the other thing is that we were concerned about accuracy of costs, because when there's change orders, that there's time involved and plans change. And Bill mentioned already their rate for change orders of under 2% is, I don't I forget what the data was, but it's, it's several times lower than sort of the state average and that they had their in-house cost estimator. It just seemed like the type of firm that for our district, which is going to have to function on a tight schedule and hit all our marks, that they were very capable of being a partner in that. So I'm happy with the selection. Mm -hmm. And even as you said, Alex, part of their proposal of having uh, an in-house estimator is important because architects and engineers, that isn't their primary, you know, um, although they can do it because they're working on projects, they're, they're not experts in that area. And I think beyond the design being tight, which is a big indicator of change orders, the other piece of that is, is who is doing your estimating <laughs> because, you know, they could be as great as they can be on their design, but if they don't have accurate price estimation that has escalation and all the rest and really looking at the market, um, even fi the financial market, quite frankly, and understanding what the impact of uh, when that work would be approved and costing that out appropriately in the budget, we've um, experienced where when that isn't done correctly, you end up having to make a lot of modifications, um, you know, after you already have a bond approved, you know, so that uh, was something they spoke about. And, and that is uh, why I believe also helps them not have a lot of change orders is having those really accurate budget numbers that are really developed well prior to a uh, bond vote. Yeah. So with all that said, are there any questions, comments? It sounds like everything was kind of well um, thought out and uh, researched and that they sort of are the, the ones that uh, rose. So um, I'm in agreement. And, and if board members are interested, there's also something in the public record. Their entire submission is something we can get to you as opposed to the PowerPoint summary here. Um, and that has, you know, reference letters from there. You know, we can have that information for you. So. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Uh, is there a motion to approve business items 1 through 12? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Should we record this for Melissa, who voted? Uh, it is being recorded. Oh, yeah, so we should get it from yeah, there? Okay. Because I had told her I would take it. Okay, okay, and thank you. you. You just voted on it, but let me flag, in, in the business items number nine, each year since I've been here may have predated me. Over the summer, you do an authorization to allow me to go ahead and authorize the hiring of faculty or staff, mm -hmm. um, because this is an atypical meeting but you have some appointments before you. So if we hadn't had this meeting for the decision mm -hmm. you just made on the contract with land, we're in a competitive market at the last minute. So um, I appreciate the board, you know, allowing me that due diligence. And there is a dead, you know, it's a hard stop October 8th, you know, just in that time frame. And then, then you are voting to a point, but it's retroactive, but there are people who already would have been here. So, so but I appreciate you, uh, supporting that and, and I also just wanted to flag item five which is something I know we've been speaking about uh, quite a bit because you had previously approved um, the uh, investigation engineering of the work that is now being um, recommended to award to a general contractor went out through a bid process and this is for um, the the issues that we've been experiencing um, over the past year or kind of was flagged for us in the last few months at Berka State, and, and it's mostly due to rain, weather, erosion, and then once we did the investigation, which means 
you know, basically having people come in and kind of cut into the field and see what's going on with the drainage, it was discovered there was a lot of uh, damage and actually drains that were broken um, right in half. So the repairs to that, and that's for the practice fields and the lower uh, field at Burke Estate. And we also have um, the, the, the side wall. And some of it, it the reason it was that it was sort of um, a little bit harder to detect is because a lot of it, you'd have to be on the other side of the wall looking up and uh, seeing where the water was going. And then the, some of it was brought to our attention by folks that were down there about what was would have been washed out down below. And there there's a lot of issues in terms of what goes into the Hudson River and how things are drained and all the rest. And there's, you know, so beyond the fact we have a lot of erosion on our fields, there's also an issue, like an environmental issue that it was causing. So this is a repair that's necessary. Um, by the time we had it fully engineered, this was not something that was in our budget. That's why I really want to flag for everyone because this was drawn to our attention after the board had adopted the budget. This, the funding of this project will come out of the, uh, what is our 4% uh, fund balance we're allowed to hold. And that is for emergency repairs. So we're that, you know, it just, we believe it um, is necessary because it's not only about our fields, it's about what other, you know, impacts there are below below those fields and for the residents who live below that area. And as well as, uh, I think we have a responsibility not to have water that the way it, uh, it was impacting um, the drainage into the, the, the town system, quite frankly. So when do we anticipate that work's gonna be done? Wayne? It's starting now, we're awarding, um, this This is, uh, once it's awarded, they're, you know, they're already, similarly the bid spoke to a, a tight time frame, and um, they were able to make that. And being that it's mostly uh, groundwork where there, there's not a need, they will have to buy some new drainage, but nothing that they need sometimes will delay the, the work. It's it's mostly just the actual work itself and the mobilization because of the hill behind it is a very uh, tricky, it's it's expensive really because of the logistics of the, the work. Um, but they anticipate being done uh, by September 1 or oh, so. So right. we um, are squeezing it in. That's also the, the time frame in which we have. But um, the thing is, even if it were to run, substantial completion um, is by the end of August. And even if it was fully available to us mid-September, we can make that work. Um, actually, the lower field, because it's mostly beyond that fence post line, yeah. behind that with the riprap and the, um, you know, the, the actual part of the reten uh, retaining wall on the other side, that field will be available for them to play. It's really the practice field yeah. that would be yeah. impacted in terms of that August start date with sports, but I think we think we'll be fine. Welcome. And, and one last thing, we don't believe either of those fields would be fields that would be being proposed as a turf field. So, you know, that was part of the analysis. Yeah, like if we were to do we're something, fine. we don't want to change out um, drainage and then say, oh, we're going to turf that field, you right, know, because right, that right. would not. Uh, so once we decided that neither of those would be the right. one that would likely be proposed, it would either be Upper Burke and, and or Reynolds, right? So that's why we, uh, you know, move forward the work. A good thing to point out. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Welcome. Um, I know we voted on it, but any other questions following up on that? This isn't a particular question about these particular items. It's actually a question about the onboarding for our new trustees. I'm assuming that as a part of them coming on board, they're having meetings with the two of you and particularly with we're reference gonna, to these we're, items. We're going to, well, I guess maybe we can get the board comments. We you want me to ask that? that? Yeah, yeah. I, just, I just want no, to make sure that they have like yeah, a thorough. Yeah, yeah let's do that in board explosion. comments. Okay. I, I think we can quickly talk about the retreat agenda and then okay. a few of the board. Is that fair? Sure. Okay. I can hold for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like dying to ask my question. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, moving on to salaried non-represented staff. This is, I believe, for Joe Lopez and, and Nick Mockery. Uh, Joe had recently trans, uh, previously last year, he wasn't included. He was an employee, but he wasn't included on, the, on this list last year because his position at the time was slightly different. Once he was elevated to a network, he's like an assistant network specialist, he was in, it's a, it's a position outside the bargaining unit. And uh, that happened after this last year, so he was missed on that original list. Oh, so this gotcha. is just to ensure that he's receiving the same as others. Gotcha, gotcha. Are there any questions or comments about um, salary for non-represented staff? No? The motion to approve the salary for non-represented staff. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Moving on to personnel. 
Uh, there are there any questions or comments regarding our appointments? And the one you were flagging is here, right? It's here. If you refresh, there's a number seven. Got it. Okay. Any other questions or comments regarding our appointments, one through seven? Is there a motion to approve our appointments, one through seven? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, moving on to terminations, there's just one. Is there a motion to approve uh, our termination? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Moving on to second public comment. There is no public. Moving on to board comments. Sylvia, go. <laughs> oh, there's just a question about the onboarding of our new trustees sure. because I find, at least I find in yeah. my experience that the most, you know, difficult or dense information to navigate is that which that I'm not familiar with, which is financial information. So it could be that our two folks are already steeped kind of in the language of these particular finances. But, you know, even things as seemingly straightforward as like budget transfers, like what allows for the money to be transferred from X pot of money to Y pot of money. I think it's very instructive when we meet with our budget official because she has so much, you know, real world knowledge with it and is very good at dis dispensing that information. So I just wanted to make a plug for meeting with Maureen, obviously meeting with Melissa as well yeah, because so they're just very helpful. And yeah, so what we're going to do, and I have a meeting tomorrow with uh, most of us were quite exhausted at the end of this year, so I've kind of been letting it go slowly, and some people didn't stop working. <laughs> but um, tomorrow I have a meeting with the three principals, Marina and Melissa, and in there I was going to bring back up what's worked, I think, so well, is a chance for the two new trustees to sit with certainly Maureen, certainly Melissa, the principals of the group, special ed administrators, uh, and to get that mapped out. And then we do open that up to other trustees, but you got to keep it at three or else it becomes a meeting right. at four. But yes, yeah, so that's definitely on the list. And then new trustees also have the, through the various associations, have the opportunity. And then you and I hadn't talked about the inquiry, that's a dangerous word, the outreach from <laughs> Keen and Bean to offer a, a separate conversation so yeah. I mean you could decide now I think it's a good idea take any opportunity possible um, I mean it's important I think individual board members know you do not have the right to go yourself to attorneys but through the board but that orientation can be very valuable um, so I mean if you yeah, think they're, they're Alice, very, I, you and I hadn't caught up with no that. but I agree with you I mean uh, I think Keenan Bean are very friendly very down-to-earth accessible and it's, it's useful, it w wouldn't take long, just to meet with them, they, they tell you the scope of what they do for the district and how we interface with it. Yeah, it's good. It's so good. If, if, you may, if what I said was clear, then we will be right back to you. So, so uh, Melissa D will be back to you probably soon after tomorrow. And if the other trustees returning want the door open to those opportunities, we'll do that. Just have to kind of first come, first serve for that third seat. Um, and we'll sort out whether it's virtual or in person. I would recommend at least you know, and again, it includes time with me if you need it to talk more broadly, but I would suggest in person with Maureen and Melissa, with the principals, we can sort that out because mm -hmm. I'm going to suggest it be the three of them together and then sped together, meaning Laura, Tesco, and Maureen and Philip. Does that, does that do it? Right. I, okay. I think that's great. All right. Um, do you, we want to go over the retreat at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's board comment, not superintendent comment, no, yeah. so, but I, I just, we Let's did, go over the... Okay, <laughs> you want me to do that? Sure. Yeah, I just uh, take advantage of you all being here. <laughs> uh, we did send out yesterday, thank you, Melissa D, for sending it out, the agenda, and it hopefully... It's yeah, in our email. Yeah, it's in there, so we modified it a bit based on the comments from before. Um, and we did send out, I guess you can blame me, I sent out a, 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 a link to the questions we submitted uh, and with some homework there, I'm viewing that as homework light, but I think, and I'll work with Melissa later this week, I think right now we, we've sort of fallen back into, Melissa's a great facilitator, I'll do my best, but you're taking a shot at a board meet, retreat where Melissa and I will be your facilitators and I'm, I'm willing to give that a go, and then we'll see how it worked. Um, and uh, so there's a lot in that item in the chart under 1245 to 145. There's more than an hour's worth of work there. 
trust me, I know. So I'll work a bit with Melissa on how much that comes up into her slot above, mm -hmm. um, or we, you know, are efficient and not get to all of those questions. But um, they're really good questions submitted by several of you. I organized them kind of into themes, gave some answers off to the right um, in the chart if you see it. But then I, the more I thought about it, I said, let me just have you do a little homework. Just begin on the back of a piece of paper, jot down what you think, and then we'll do some exercises to bring those together. Also in the email was suggested skimming of uh, chapters. Returning board members, you may still have your book, and, and you can skim it. I actually assigned more than Ken Mitchell did. Uh, but it's a skim. <laughs> Uh, please, uh, I think if you were worried about cohesion in terms of the board and as well as it relates to the cabinet, there's a chapter in there you can skim on the superintendent mindset, which I thought is actually good to skim, not just mm -hmm. you all. Um, and at the very end, it's a quick, quick read, chapter eight has actually some tools that you might say, hey, why aren't we using those? Um, and uh, But again, please skim that. What I didn't include in there yesterday would be when you skim it, please pull out two or three ideas for how this is going to help you as a board member. Mm -hmm. I can send you that an email if you want, but that was left out. So when you skim, just what are the two or three things you are pulling out from this to help you as a board member? And then we can guide that sort of discussion. Um, it's a very valuable book. It is conceptual. It is, uh, in me, theory is rooted in practice. So those who say it's theoretical, not done tied to practice on this bad theory in my book, but um, still it's conceptual. But it is based on some very successful districts, boards, and all the rest. So it, it's at least, I, I think, a good grounding. So let me stop. Any feedback, questions? No, I was just going to say that the way that you framed that sounds very much like my eighth grader's assignment for his class, where he has to like, you know, <laughs> put the little tag it notes and say, what did you actually learn? So we are constructively bringing it back full circle, yeah. even from down in the students up to the BOE level. Yeah. There you we go. Need to write in our book. Exactly. We're active yeah. learners. Yeah. Active yeah. learners. Yeah, we're Authentic learning opportunities. See? All of the portraits. Yeah, there, there you go. go. <laughs> POHL in action. Yeah. <laughs> and, and between now and next, uh, the 24th, if you have questions, thoughts, other things you want us to dig into, desire for more clarity on any aspects of the retreat. Um, you know, let me know. I will be working, final comment, I'll be working with Will Kang on his piece. I don't know, will you be talking with Doug about his piece? Alex? I just spoke with him already a little bit, but especially now that we, we, you know, had that presentation from the architect and engineering firm, I'm going to circle back with him yeah. as well. Yeah, I'll talk with him. Okay. Yeah. So, and just to know we're, oh, sorry. No, no, sorry. Just, so the 24th is, you know, that's not tomorrow, but it's the next Wednesday, just I don't know, in the summertime, I never know. It seems like the days are farther apart, but it's the following Wednesday, so just FYI. Um, any other questions or comments about? We're in board comments, so anybody want to? No? OK. Uh, anything else, or we good to wrap? No? Is there a motion to adjourn our meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Thank you. <laughs>